Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And today I'm gonna do another unboxing. Um, and then we'll get into it. All right, let's do it. <laughs> I already opened this part. I just didn't really open this part. Um, Cause I wanted to record it. Have some content for my channel. So I, uh, well, my fiance recently ordered this for me for my birthday, but let's see, there it is. It's a Porlex, Porlex, Porlex mini coffee grinder, ceramic coffee grinder, I think. So I do a lot of pour overs, as you saw in my first video. Um, that's basically my morning routine. So I wanted to get all that morning routine out of the way, like going to the coffee shop, Waiting for them to make coffee for me. I can just do it all myself now. Some instructions in Japanese. That's kind of helpful. All right. Hey, this is actually nice. This, this is tiny. It's a little portable thing. So if I need to take this with me whenever I'm traveling, grind my own coffee out there. That'd be cool. Oh, it comes with a little carrying strap for your handle. Silicone material, that's nice. Oh yeah, that's legit, listen to this. Dang, that sounds smooth. This is a really nice quality... Oh shit. <laughs> this was really nice quality design. You can change the coarseness by turning this little dial here. So if you want... If you want more coarse, or you want finer, is it 3D printed? No, it's, it's, it looks like it's 3D printed. But you can turn this little dial here, and then it changes the the coarseness of the coffee grounds. So with like doing pour overs, I uh, I usually try to make it around um, medium coarse, like kosher salt. Yeah, you can see the inside here. Those are the burrs that grinds the coffee for you. And then it deposits into this little holder here. Yeah, clean brushed material. Japan Porlex and Co. LTD. Oh, damn. Like laser etched on there. Uh, let's see, see that. Oh, there it is. Yeah. That's tight. So, yeah, about to go test this out. Let's go check it out. Welcome to my kitchen. Oh, this part of my kitchen. I don't want to show you the rest because it's kind of messy. Got this coffee yesterday from the local coffee shop. Um, Insomnia. Dapper and Wise. It's a light roast from Peru. Had a little sample of it at the shop. It was pretty good. So just going to try it out today. Let's get into it. It's hard doing it one-handed. I don't know how people do this. Uh, give me a second. No. Ooh, yeah, look at that. Damn. Ooh, this smells good. Okay, everyone, get out your scales. You're probably wondering why do I need a scale in the first place. You're gonna find out real soon why. You'll want to weigh out your beans for the correct water to coffee ratio. I'm using one to 17 for a regular pour over brew. That means I'll have 340 grams of water to 20 grams of coffee. So I just weighed out 20 grams. Oh, got a couple loose beans in there. All right, let's get cracking on these beans. <laughs> Sorry. Another tool that would be handy in this situation is a tiny little funnel, but since I don't have that, I have a bowl with a spout. Just gonna pour all these beans in here. So you want to grind your beans to a medium coarseness equivalent to kosher salt. That's about 8 to 10 clicks for me. 
I'm not too sure what the number would be if you have an automatic grinder. I can't afford that right now, hence the manual grinder. So whatever the setting that gives you medium fine will do. Although this isn't as efficient as an automatic grinder, you'll be getting other benefits from using a manual grinder, like getting a good arm workout while you're prepping your coffee. And trust me, it is a good workout. My arm actually got tired. You know what they say though, nothing worth it is ever easy. So this will all be worth it once it's all done, right? I mean, I hope it is. I'm just checking to see if there are any loose beans that didn't get grinded up by the burrs. Nope, everything looks good. Well, I guess not. I guess we're going to continue grinding. And if you have your settings correct, this is how your coffee should look. Oh yeah, look at that. That looks like very coarse sand. Okay, moving on to my dripper of choice, the Hario V60. This thing can brew a lot of coffee. Uh, well, I mean, it holds a lot of coffee. I haven't put more than 26 grams of coffee in it because I'm afraid any more than that might kill me. As I'm prepping this filter to sit correctly inside the V60, I had to fold the edge so that it can sit more snugly. I guess we'll say that. All right, and then you wanna pre-wet your filter with boiling hot water, approximately 195 to 205 degrees Fahrenheit. Once all the water has drained through the paper filter, you should get rid of all that excess water. Why pre-wet the filter, I hear you asking? Well, if you've ever drank water from those cheap cups at the cooler in a waiting room, you'll know what I'm talking about. This process gets rid of that paper taste. As you can see here, the coffee is a medium fine grind. Hey, that kind of rhymed. Give your brewing apparatus a couple love taps to level out the coffee. Now that we're halfway through this whole process, I think it's the time that I mention the best way to do this is having a gooseneck kettle to do your pour overs. I'm using one by Hario. And no, I am not sponsored by them. But if anybody from Hario is watching, holla at your boy. Now the main event of the morning is the pour over. Be sure to saturate the coffee grounds and let the grounds bloom for 45 seconds. I'm sorry, I don't know where that came from. It's a little bit early. I'm still trying to learn how to speak. So the blooming process is basically just a fancy way of saying, just wait a few seconds. The reason why you want to wait a few seconds is so that the coffee grounds can release all that CO2. This way, your coffee won't end up tasting acidic. Unless you're into that kind of thing, then by all means, continue pouring. Once the 45 seconds is up, you'll want to pour slowly in a circular motion, approximately a size of a quarter. As you can see here, the corner that I'm trying to draw is not very small. I'd also like to mention that having a scale that comes with a timer is really handy at this moment. So you want to continue pouring in this motion until the water has reached 340 grams or you can pre-measure the water to 340 milliliters if that's how much water you're trying to use and pour all of that into the coffee. This whole process should take about two and a half to three minutes. If it goes over that, that either means your coffee grounds are too fine or you're using too much water. This is where you'll want to experiment with your grinder setting and hope that you have enough coffee to test all this stuff out. Once you're done waiting for all that to go through, this is what your coffee should look like. You'll want to give it a couple swirls to infuse some oxygen into it. I'm not sure if that's actually what this does, but it sounds good. And there you have it. A nice cup of joe manually made by you. Enjoy it because you earned it. All right, guys, that's essentially my morning routine. Now that I have the Poralex mini grinder, I'm just going to be making a whole bunch of pour overs. And then there's going to be something coming in the mail soon. And then once that gets here, I'll do an unboxing on that, too. So stay tuned for that. Anyways, cheers.
please like and subscribe and let me know what you'd like to see next in the comments section below. Alright guys.